everybody. It's Thursday and it is demo night again here at Now You're Cooking. Tonight we're going to make a Caesar salad with a fresh homemade dressing with Betsy Fear, uh, Mike's beautiful wife. Um, so we're happy to have Betsy in the kitchen tonight. Coming up next week we have mussels that we're making with beer from Bath Brewing Company. Um, yummy steamed mussels. After that we're going to make a Dutch baby which is like a giant popover um, that is shared between several people or you can eat it yourself if you want to um, and we're going to make a homemade lemon curd with that so that's going to be really fun and then the first week in September we've got Steve Corman from Vina's Fizz House coming back and he's going to do some cocktails with us so Betsy hi hi how are you I am fantastic Good. welcome to our kitchen well thanks for inviting which she me she owns um, to my tell kitchen. us about your Caesar so this is a recipe that I learned from my dad, who loved to make salads, and he was ex he experimented all the time. Um, but I think he must have looked this up from sort of the origin, accordingly, apparently original recipe from um, an Italian man who immigrated and had a restaurant in um, Mexico, and they found themselves short of ingredients in one night and had to just scramble with whatever they had, and. Caesar, what was his last name? Carl. Anyway, Caesar. Carvado. Somebody. You can look it up. Something like that. So he made this this combination of ingredients, and I've stuck with it. And um, so I've become sort of a Caesar salad snob when I'm in restaurants. Um, probably the best one I ever had was in a restaurant in San Francisco where they made it live at the table, you know, with all the ingredients. So you saw exactly what went into it. And that's what we're going to do tonight. Um, we've <coughs> prepped a little bit beforehand. What my dad would always do would be to chop up um, two or three cloves of garlic and soak them in oil um, over, well, uh, for a few hours so that the oil was really infused with that garlic. And he would also, ahead of time, prep some croutons, which um, back when he was doing it when I was a kid, they didn't have the seasoned croutons. He, they just were plain bread. So he would... Um, put some olive oil and garlic in a cast iron pan and throw in the croutons and let them kind of sit there turning them over and letting those get infused with the garlic and oil and of course it would always make him a little bit frustrated because croutons kept disappearing from the pan he's like where are my croutons and he said that a mouse came and got them the and mouse I don't know about this that this is the mouse in I don't person. know about that so anyway um that's what we've started so far. Um, I've got my ingredients here. So it's the garlic and oil. Um, I have a fresh egg and I've got lemon, which I did a, a dress rehearsal last night and I used the other half of the lemon. And this is how I preserved it in the fridge. So it stayed nice and fresh. And you keep overnight. that cut side is... The cut side goes down. So, nice. so it doesn't get a skin yeah. on it or anything. Yeah. So... I am going to ream that in our beautiful new jadeite Which we have in reamer. a couple of different colors. Yeah, and it's nice. It's a big one so that if you had oranges or grapefruits or whatever, you can do that and you could do a few of them so the bowl is really deep and it's going to hold a lot of juice. So there's my lemon juice, my half a lemon. And then I have uh, washed my romaine lettuce. I always use romaine. And I, s you know, spun it clean in my favorite OXO salad spinner, Super which easy has a use. break on it. So you can and it comes it. out really dry. You can see this has already just been spun. Yep. And there's hardly any water left on there. It's yep. a great job. So that's good. I have, I buy Rome, hearts of romaine, and I have used two full hearts of romaine, um, and it will serve about four people, four to five people probably. So I'm going to start by putting the olive oil, do I have a little Forks scraper? Are that way. Oh, okay, I was also going to use a little scraper. Um, hope I didn't screw that up on a line. So my garlic and olive oil goes into the bowl. 
And it's nice because you're actually making it right in the bowl that you're going to serve it in. So. Right, right. And I have a curved fork. You could use the back of a spoon or a slotted spoon. And I just mush it a little bit further just to get it all tasting really wonderful. Then I'm going to put in one of my other ingredients is Worcestershire sauce. And I put in a few splashes, I don't know, it's maybe three, t three teaspoons or a couple tablespoons. And all of this you can do to taste. You can adjust everything to your own taste. I like a lot of garlic, so mine tend to be a bit heavy on the garlic. We have Coleman's dry mustard. And I'm going to put in a teaspoonful. Is that what I did yesterday? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I think so. The, the recipe will be posted under comments, and we actually did write down measurements, so um, <laughs> you don't have to guess. Because I don't measure when I'm doing it, so it just... A few grinds of fresh pepper. And maybe a teaspoon of salt. Again, all of this to taste. And um, once we put the lettuce in there, we spin it all around and um, we taste it and we ask ourselves, what next? What, what else do we need? Um, next, I'm going to put in the egg. And <coughs> it is a raw egg. There are online um, recipes for alternatives to if you're not happy or don't feel comfortable using a raw egg. I've been eating raw eggs and Caesar salad all my life with never a problem. So that's what I use. So I was thinking yesterday when I was watching you, um, this would be a really great housewarming gift, like a nice wooden bowl, which we sell here. Um, we sell the Coleman's mustard. We sell a really nice olive oil. We sell a really nice Parmesan, aged Parmesan cheese. Um, you could like put all of this stuff together with, you know, the microplane or something. It'd be a really, really nice gift for somebody. That would Christmas, be awesome. wedding. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, you'd have to keep the cheese cold, but yeah. you know, other than that, what um, a what a le and then you could print up the recipe and give it to to whoever you're giving yeah. it to. And so I'm just straining the, the lemon juice so that the seeds don't go in there. Then I'm going to open my anchovies. We sell anchovies here now, which is pretty exciting. Um, because sometimes you'll find that some restaurants don't serve anchovies and you might have some in your pocket that you... Um, so th yeah, we all carry anchovies in our pocket. I have a can in my purse right now. Granted, I'm taking it home so I can make salad. I don't carry it around all the time, yeah. but I might start doing it. Yeah. So In I the can. Whoa. In the can. Anchovies. Do not take the anchovies out of the can and put them in your pocket. So here they are. Little, I'm fish, little salty fish. Little salty fish. Um, a lot of people say, oh, I don't want anchovies in there. But if they are, um, you know, chopped up very finely and they become just part of the essence, I find that a lot of times people, it's just they think they don't like them, the, you know. And yet it's not like you're eating a anchovy just plain out of the can. No, it's it all, is it's all an incorporated into the dressing. So it obviously adds a salty taste. Um, there's that. And then um, the Parmesan Reggiano, which we sell here. And I like to use uh, the, the fine micrograin, micrograin, microplane grater, um, because this makes it very light and kind of fluffy, and it incorporates well into the, into the dressing. Um, I do, could be a quarter to, yeah, probably about a quarter of a cup. And it uh, looks so good. We got to try it last night in the dress rehearsal, and it was absolutely fabulous. Can't and wait to make, you know what you can do. I know sometimes at restaurants they have 
big curls of Parmesan on top. So of course we have the microplane with the, the wider slots so that if you shave that onto the salad at the end, you'll have those nice big curls of Parmesan, which are really nice to bite into. There's that. So, have I done everything? I think so. I think so. So I'm going to put all your ingredients. The first half of the lettuce in there to start with. <clears throat> and you can tear the salad, you know, the lettuce, or what I've started doing more recently. There's a there's a fork in my salad. <laughs> The fork is not in the ingredient list. What happened? <laughs> um, I've started, um, I used to just tear the, sal the, the heads, but now I, I cut off sort of the base of the head and then I slice it sort of into strips so that it becomes um, the right size to go on a fork. So you're not jamming a whole leaf in your mouth. Yeah, although they're a little bit big tonight. Sorry. That's well, okay, we it's my supper. It's a little smaller. Yes. So it makes a, a very generous amount of dressing. Um, which is nice. So and it's, oh, go ahead. Well, you're doing that. I was just going to talk about we have a couple of wines that we think would be really nice with a Caesar salad. Um, this is an Assertico from Greece. It's really light, minerally, really fresh flavor. Um, and that would be lovely. And then we have this new wine. We just brought this in. It's a Frulliano from Italy, and it is, it's kind of salty. Um, so I think it would be really good with any kind of fishy, like s fresh salad, yep. fish, anything that um, you really want that more minerally salty kind of flavor to go with. So you want to toss this really well, just to make sure everything, all the pieces are coated so that every time you take a bite you're getting that all that wonderful flavor of the parmesan and the anchovies and the garlic and mustard and worcestershire it all blends very nicely to make just you know we were saying last night when i drove home with the remains in my car the bowl was on the passenger seat and as i was driving home it's just that kind of salad and it's you can't stop and also it's, um, to me, the only salad that the, the day after, if for some bizarre reason it didn't all get eaten, um, the day after, it's great, cold it's so out of the good. fridge. Yeah. yeah. Which is, it's the only salad I know that you can say that about. So there's the added garlic, the croutons. Toss that all in, and it's well coated. And there you are. And if you wanted to shave on the big pieces, you could do that. And do you have any questions? No, that looks, all right? that looks awesome. It looks delicious. And I'm going to have some as soon as we close here. Um, so again, next week, thank you very much. You Betsy. are very that welcome. Happy awesome. to do it. Can't I hope wait you to all make it try it. Um, next week, we're doing mussels with a Bath Brewing Company beer. Um, and then the week after that is the Dutch Baby, the Giant... Um, pop over with homemade fresh lemon curd and um, that's going to be exciting. We're looking Great. forward to it and hope to see you then. Thanks for joining us.